So I am here with two incredibly talented men right here. Kobe, you're writer and director of the American Society of Magical Negroes. And Justice, it's so good to meet you as well. Nice to meet you too. Yes, how are y'all feeling? I mean, I know the movie's here, and how are you feeling about everything? Um, we feel good. I mean, you know, it's it's provoking a lot of conversation that we wanted to have. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people are responding to it. Uh, a lot of people are mad about it, which yeah. is, you know, <laughs> it, it, like invited as well, welcomed as well. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's cool. It's just cool to like finally like get the thing out there, you know, mm -hmm. like the thing that we work so hard on that we're so proud of. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, this is a bigger deal for Kobe, obviously. This is his baby, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, it's both, it's both of ours, and it's, I'm just excited for people to see the whole movie, you know, because that part. So much, there's been so much conversation about mm -hmm. what the movie is and isn't, and it's like, well, so let's go see the movie and pick up these conversations, so I'm, yeah. I'm excited about that. So, of course, yeah. let's jump in. So, the American Society of Magical Negroes, it follows Aaron, who's recruited by the Secret Society, of course, um, of black people who dedicate their lives to pretty much making white people comfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I know, of course, it's a comedy, but of course, you know, they say there is truth in every joke. So I want to know from you, Kobe, like, why, what What was the inspiration behind this movie? Talk to me about some of the things you pulled from. Yeah, so, so first of all, the Magical Negro is a, it's a stock character, um, you know, a lot of people know, but just to, to say it out loud, you know, it's um, like a black best friend character, or the, the wise old black guy who has some advice, and he's not the hero of the story, he's really just there to, to support the white lead. and. Mm -hmm. Um, and first and foremost, the inspiration is responding to that trope and criticizing it because it basically says black people should be in the background, they shouldn't be in the, in the spotlight, right? Um, and beyond that, it's a way for me to talk about a very particular experience I had as a black person growing up of uh, being taught to be accommodating to white people. And, and the classic example I always use is being told how to talk to a, a white cop, right? Which is that my dad ex quite explicitly was like, hey, when you're in that situation, it does not matter about your pride. You just you are polite and you get home safe. And and I think I for me, I sort of overlearned that lesson, you know. And so the point of view of the society members that you describe, where they just wake up every morning and they just accommodate white people, obviously it's it's a satire, <laughs> you know. That's not that's not our point of view. Yeah, it's not right? the mission statement. But, uh, but like yeah, we don't think that's good. You know? uh, but but as a way to talk about that. I think well-intentioned but really dark lesson that I was taught and and the work that I at least have had to do to get over it you know the, the film is a I think a really a joyful and, and funny film but also a way to explore that very very sort of serious um, difficult lesson that I was taught and had to overcome absolutely and I mean just speaking at, about the conversation behind this I mean yeah. so much conversation even simply just when the trailer dropped about yeah, I mean yeah, people yeah. just saying di different things as far as an overgeneralization of white people sure, sure, sure. race baiting or even asking sure. the question as far as why you're making the humor out of this subject so yeah, yeah, yeah. for yeah. you Kobe what do you say to these people who are writing these think pieces making these videos sure why sure. was it important for you to tell this story in this way yeah well you know, I, I, I think it's it's troublingly relevant, you know, and, you know, the fact that this is not every black person's response to systemic racism. I don't expect it to be and I and, uh, would not suggest that of anybody, but it's mine. And because it's mine, it was probably somebody else's too. And so I, whenever that's true, you sort of assume someone will be nourished by watching someone get over this lesson. But beyond that, there's, there's, real, there's real politics to this, right? And, and you know, we're, we're watching, you know, in, in places like Florida, you know, curriculum being legislated that's all about like literally laws saying we cannot teach black history if it makes white people uncomfortable. You know, so this conversation about over accommodating white discomfort isn't just, <laughs> you know, about like me in my head as a kid or this character that I've written. It's also a larger conversation about our whole country and who, who's, who we're comfortable making uncomfortable and who we're not comfortable making uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. so, so I think the politics of it are, are terrifically relevant beyond it just being a big, a big fun movie. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's important to note, too, like, I was saying, a lot of these comments came from just the trailer. People hadn't yeah, 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 really seen the yeah. movie yet. Um, to know the message behind but, it. But yeah, and look, and it's like there's so many, the, the funny thing is there's so many controversies, it's like we got to know which controversy, yeah, which controversy you're talking about. You know, because it's like, because really like white people are mad about certain things, mm -hmm. like black people yeah. are mad about other things, yeah. you I mean, know. Even and even things and as far as calling your blackness into question. To 100 percent, yeah. you know what I mean? And and look, it is it is a very particular choice. Like Justin and I are both, we're both black biracial, we're both light skinned, you know. Um, it's There's a real responsibility we have. We think a lot about colorism, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a real response. There's a, there's a, it's so important to 
put darker skinned bodies on screen and to center those bodies. There's really important political work, but part of what we're interested in with this particular casting and this particular story is one of the things this film is about is about the false promise of assimilation, mm -hmm. right? So the, there's an idea, right? Justice says it has a really pithy version of Palatability it. Palatability won't save you, <laughs> right? but a lot of biracial people, light-skinned people, uh, believe that you know they're they're kind of given a, a more of a, of a cushy life than dark their darker skinned brothers and sisters, but it, it's it's like and so they think that they're like oh just right at the edge of like getting full white privilege, but yeah. it's exclusionary, you know. It's yeah, like yeah. they 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 will never be let. Uh, they will never get a seat at that table. Yeah, the, you know? the, the, the and, and this is it. No matter, on, yeah. yeah, it's like this, yeah, it's the false promise that if, if yeah. I walk a certain way, talk a certain way, dress a certain way, it's, like... It's gonna be okay. I, I, Amer I'll, America's gonna I'll, be racist I'll be too. Okay. It's gonna be okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it's like, if you just comply with the officer's orders, you're gonna be safe, Yeah. right? And it's like, we all know that's, that's not true, but it is still a lie that you hear propagated. And to me, part of the power of casting a more palatable, lighter skinned black man in that role is to me it clarifies that, oh, even if even if he behaving the way this character does in this film can't get the full benefits of white privilege, then that whole talking point, that whole promise of assimilation is a lie. So it's about sharpening that critique. So, you know, while it's crucially important to to, to center dark skinned black people and to, to to normalize that as what black people and what people look like, mm -hmm. you know, um, there there's a real politics to this that I think is, is really valuable too. Yeah, it's meaningful. Yeah. 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 Well I'm, I'm I'm glad yeah. you kind of addressed all of that because, of course, these are all conversations that are happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Justice, for you, what do you think was some some or one big personal lesson you took from creating the, or I'm sorry, acting in this film? Mm -hmm. It was cathartic for me. You know, I, I related to, uh, like, the character. You know, Kobe and I have a very similar experience mm -hmm. with our upbringing, obviously, and we look exactly the same. So I, that, was I mean, say, that. You <laughs> Also, look alike. I did. part of it. I did. Lie, I did lie and tell a waiter I was his older brother last night. And you know? there was no worked. question. I'm yeah, sorry. like it, it was I'm believed sorry, immediately. We lied to you. you were so nice, and we lied to you. Um, uh, but you uh, know, I, I grew up in a very white environment. I grew up in Orange County, California. It's a very red county. It's a very white environment, and I internalized a lot of the messaging I was receiving from my white peers. Like I was being put in my place as a as a as a black kid, and and I and I did so much to compromise my identity and uh, and to fit in, to assimilate, and, and obviously to, to no avail because that, that never works. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I luckily had this really powerful liberation and uh, after I got out of that community and was able to like define my blackness for myself and like uh, reach what I consider empowerment. But when I read this script, I was like, I wish I had this movie when I was a kid. It would have helped me, like, it would help me get there so much faster, you know? Mm -hmm. To know that, like, oh, I'm not alone in, like, this shameful compromise. Like, I'm not al alone in, like, you know, making myself small to, to survive. Like, uh, like, that's a common experience. It's Kobe's experience, it's my experience, and it's experiences, it's the experience of people who watch and connect with the film. So I, I'm just happy that it's, like, it, it exists now. Uh, for for other people coming up, you know, and you're a part of it, and I'm a part of it, you know, yeah. <laughs> That's big. Yeah. So ultimately, um, Kobe, you know, obviously there's already a lot of conversation, but what is the goal with this movie? Like, what real conversations do you want audiences to walk away having? Yeah. Well, I, the way I I think about my job as an artist is to do two things incredibly rigorously. One is to be really, really honest. Um, especially about things that I, I haven't really heard anybody say before, and then maybe I'm a little embarrassed to say, I feel like, oh, I'm saying too much, right? Um, and, and that I think are relevant and important, right? To be incredibly honest about that stuff. And then the second is to be really entertaining, is to try to be really honest in a really dynamic and really entertaining way. And, and if I've done that, my sort of process and artistic values are that I just trust that, that good things will come out of that. And look, the subject matter is so volatile, you know, that to, to even to hear 
uh, for, 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 certain, for certain black people, even hearing a black person say the stuff I've just said in this conversation, that, hey, yeah. I accommodated white people in this way, is really disquieting. Yeah. You know, it's like we don't, you know, they don't like thinking about us doing that. And it's like, I don't like, I don't like thinking about me doing that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. So let's be clear, yeah. you know, like, I don't love this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would much rather have made a film about how amazing and beyond reproach I was my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's, uh, that's my next one. My sequel's about how perfect I am. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but, you know, but so, so for some people, I think it's going to be really disquieting even to engage with the fact that a black person did this. For other people, like Justice is saying, like the young versions of us, hopefully it can be really nourishing and really empowering and make those people um, stand up a little taller and take up a little more space, you know. But, but to a certain extent, my job is just to be really honest and let the, let the ball bounce where it may and, and, and hope good things come out of it. Now, for both of you, what was your favorite part about making this movie? Was there a certain day oh, or a certain so much. thing or memory <laughs> that made this that much more special uh, for you? Um, I got to learn how to knit. Mm, which was true. cool. Yeah. Okay. Knitting is really meditative. You knitted me a sweater. You knitted me a scarf. I knitted you a scarf. Uh, excuse excuse me, a scarf. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll be waiting for mine. It's a whole okay. scarf. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll send it in the mail. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, Kobe is such a great leader. Like the, the the set was one of the smoothest sets I've ever been on. It was it was so well oiled, and he has a he's like he's great with people. Like he knows how to talk to each department head and make them feel valued as artists and as collaborators. So even though he has a uh, you know a, a, a clear vision, he still knows how to like listen and make people feel supported and. I, it just it was a really happy set you know it, it was it was good vibes and it's now like my reference for how sets need to be moving forward I'm <laughs> like you, this yeah way. exactly <laughs> exactly yeah, that's, that's my goal I was like I was like you make sure you tell other directors that. yeah uh, yeah how really. about for you Kobe what was you, you know, for me, it's like the, the, the thing that I love most about this stuff is collaborating, you know, and getting, and because, you know, it lives in your head in a specific way, but the best feeling is when it surpasses what you, when it sort of beats what was in your head, you know, and then you don't tell anybody, you're like, oh yeah, that's how I pictured it. <laughs> you know? But like, there was, there was a great moment in that, and there's, there's a big climactic monologue scene that Justice r really like sh shaped one particular line in, I don't know if you remember it, and I won't give it away because it's the end of the movie, but I'd sort of written it one way, and it works great, and it plays great, and he's like, no, no, I don't think he would say this, I think he would say it this way. And it was like, oh, oh yeah. you're right. You actually, the baton has sort of passed, and now, even though I originated this character and wrote him, and he came from my own brain, and he's based on me, you actually know him even better than I do at yeah. this point, yeah. you know? And that's, yeah, and it's a really beautiful thing to be like, oh, wow, I've sort of given people this seed, and they've sort of surpassed, you know, mm -hmm. even what was in my own head in the best possible way. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to thank you both so yeah. much. I mean, despite all the controversy. <laughs> we love it. We love it. It's good. No, it's um, fun. Yeah. I definitely just want to say congratulations yeah. on being black men and doing this and telling mm. this story in your own authentic way. Mm. So thank congratulations you. Congratulations on this. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you.